Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to talk about cars where they have issues that should be easy to fix and easy to get to, but the engineers made sure it is not that way just for you. Let's get started. This is a 2007 Audi S6 with the 5.2 Lamborghini derived V10. It's not a true Lamborghini engine, but there is basically the design of it is. I apologize in the background, there's people working. There's a little bit of noise today, but we are very, very busy in the shop right now. But as we're getting into this job, it was so frustrating. And this car has actually been in the videos before you guys have seen a video on this particular car. We fixed many issues on it, and now there are more issues in other areas. It, and truly, on this S6s, it'll always have issues. You'll never be done fixing one of these. It will always be more and more and more. But I frequently get told when I have customers pick up a car, even when they're aware how complicated a problem was, it's the same story. This didn't have to cost so much, except for the engineers made it be that way. This is a prime example. We're going to take a look at also the Dodge Viper that's behind me. But this one came in with a leaking radiator. That's it. That's the only problem. And on any other car, whether it be a Toyota Camry or even the E550 I have in the shop over there right now, it'd be a fairly easy job and it wouldn't be that expensive. This one is way expensive. It's going to be over a grand for a radiator. So here's the 5.2 V10. This one has had the intake cleaned. It's had all the intake ports and the heads cleaned. It's had the whole service done on it and it runs really good now. But that's not why it's here. That part's fixed and we've moved past that. The problem is in here where the radiator sits. It actually sits under this panel. You can see the screw holes or bolt holes. This entire black plastic piece is one solid piece all the way on the front of the car. You can see it runs down there. So you're not just going to take this top cover off and get to the radiator. As the story with many Audis, this is called a bumper off job or take the front fascia off. I'll go ahead and move the condenser out of the way. So here we see where the radiator sits, right in through here. And as you can see, this black plastic frame piece as I said before, it's not just one top piece. It's all one huge frame. So the only way to get the radiator out is to take the bumper off and take the actual metal bumper off, which is also gone, and move the condenser out of the way so the radiator can come out. It's quite a really dumb design. But while it's open here, I wanted to show you some other issues with this car that are so hard to fix. So if you guys remember, I actually used to own one of these and I thought it was a really cool car, but after servicing it and fixing a few oil leaks and having to really dig deep to fix a lot of things on it, I got rid of it really fast. It's nothing against this car and I'm not trying to dog this guy's car, but I wish the engineers would have made it a little easier to work on. There are things on this car like the auction sensors and several other parts and pieces on this car that are engine out. You want to do this? Engine out. You want to do that? Engine out. It's really ridiculous. Let me show you some things that were really tough for me. Right here you can see these little fins. This is an oil cooler. It actually is behind this pulley. But it has seals where it mounts right where my fingers touching. You can see the bolt. It's a plate that goes all the way up and down. Where it mounts there, it can leak oil or antifreeze, whichever one, but it's usually oil, all over the place. To get to it, the alternator has to come out. This whole bracket has to come out. The belt has to come off. And it's insanely difficult. Let me reiterate that. Insanely difficult to get to. While we're here, we noticed his front main seal was leaking. So this main pulley has to come off, and it's a pretty simple job. This job itself is easy, but all of this had to come off. Can you imagine the radiators here, the steel bumpers on, and also the plastic fascias on, fascia, fascia, whatever you want to call them. So the only thing you're left with is down here, 
You're not going to get a pulley off through there. Or up here. You're not going to get the pulley off through there either. Another thing that can leak or cause issues and is really hard to get to, the thermostat. Or your AC compressor. It's hideous to get to this thing. It's just crazy. Except for the radiator being off and out of the way, most of this stuff is completely 100% inaccessible. You're just not going to get to it. And there, like I mentioned a minute ago, there are many parts on this car that unless the engine is out of the car, you're not going to get to it. You're just not going to. It doesn't matter how good of a mechanic you are. There's no way. It's crazy. And if you look way inside of there, you can see the starter. Way inside of there. Under the exhaust manifold. Enclosed by the frame. Everything. Surrounding the starter. You're not going to get to it. It is really, really tough engine to work on. So a lot of people have heard about the North Star starters being underneath the intake. That's a cakewalk. I'll do 10 of those before I would do the starter on this one. This is really hard as, as far as starters go. It's one of the hardest ones. So you remember I talked about the AC compressor. We just looked at it through the front of the car. Let's take a look through the top of the engine bay area, just as if this car was fully back together. You can see it down in there. You're not going to get it out. Very, very difficult. Let's take a look at the other side. As you can see on this side of the engine, the passenger side, you really can't get to anything. You can't do anything. And you've got the strut tower, which is right here. It sticks way out, almost touching the engine, and comes back around where all this blue staining is on both sides of the engine. So that kind of reiterates how difficult it is. There's many of these parts as kind of like a tease or a, almost like a torture. You can touch the part, you can see the part, but you know in your mind, even as a seasoned veteran mechanic, I'm not going to get that part out without doing the major engine removal or the front end coming off. Or, and it's just angering. I haven't had very many customers complain about the cost of doing these things because when they own a car like this, they know everything is difficult, everything's expensive. But they still make the comment, I wish it was designed a little better. And I think that when they put these cars together, they're just like, the car's cool, it does the job, I'm not personally going to have to work on it in the future. So, fourthly, I don't care. That's their problem, that's your problem. And that's kind of sad to, to do things that way. This car is a special car. And in being that it's special, the parts on it are not as readily available as any other car, which you could imagine. But this is some of the dilemma with owning one of these cars. Let's talk about the radiator issue I had. So I ordered a radiator from one of my online sources. I'm not going to mention names. But it asked the year, the make, the model, I checked all the boxes, 2007 Audi S6, 5.2 liter V10. Yes, and it says this radiator fits your vehicle. I said, oh good, I'll go ahead and buy it. And I purchased it, and it took a week, a little over a week to get here. All of my other outlets are just like, we don't even stock that radiator. So I found a place that did, I waited the week, a little bit over a week to get the radiator, and I get it delivered, open the box, pull it out, and my heart sinks. I just waited over a week for a part that is absolutely useless to the customer and to me because it doesn't even match. It's not even the same radiator. As you can see, this hose or the neck that comes off is actually the same. But a little bit below this, I'm expecting to see a mount bracket for the fan assembly, which is right here. It's not even on this radiator. It's gone. This little groove here where there's a kind of an air seal that goes there. It's not even on this radiator. And then when we look down below, this neck sticks way out. That one's over there short. It has a place for the fans. This one does not. This has some sort of transmission cooler, which was not used on the S6. Also, the S6 has a hose connection here, a smaller connection, which is completely absent on this radiator. 
So there's nothing on this radiator that I can, nothing about it that I can use. It does appear to be the same height and the same shape, and it may be for an Audi A6 with a different engine. This is the same chassis or whatnot, but it's definitely not an S6 V10 radiator. I contacted the seller and they said, well, our records show that's a proper radiator. I sent them pictures and I said, prove it. Then they came back and said, well, yeah, you're right. It's not the right radiator. We checked our records a little deeper and we said on our online site that it is the correct radiator, but we know now that it is not. So I'm like, great. Now I have to call my customer and say it's going to be another week and a half. This is where parts stores and mechanics are different. The parts stores can cross-reference numbers, they know all the part numbers, but they don't understand the mechanics behind the parts they sell. Just like they did on the scenario where I emailed this company and they said, oh, well, our, our records show that it should fit. They're just going off of numbers. But after they see the pictures, then they're like, yeah, you're right. That doesn't even begin to be the same radiator. They're going to refund my money. I have no issue with this seller. The only issue I have is I just blew a week and a half for this customer for nothing. They just lost a week and a half of their time. So I found one at FCP Euro. It's going to take a week to get here, and it is the correct radiator. It actually cost a little bit more money, but I'm not worried about the cost so much as that they actually have one. So this is the dilemma that you have with these cars that are specialty cars. And I say this a lot when we schedule people in in the office. It should take a week to get your car done, but if shipping has a delay or if they send me the wrong part, you're going to have to start the shipping time all over again. It's just the name of the game. Let's go take a look at the Viper. So this is a 1995 Dodge Viper. This is actually Euro-Asian Bob's. He's been having some trouble lately filling up his gas tank. It really keeps clicking off on the, on the nozzle. And I know from experience it's probably going to be the charcoal canister, the purge valve. And just like anybody else, I think, okay, that's, that's pretty simple to get to. I'll probably, it's underneath the car or something. I'll check the charcoal canister, get it replaced. We'll get you back on the road. Again, the engineers did not care, not even one iota, about the mechanic or the future repairs of the vehicle. All they cared about was the design and get it off the assembly line and get it sold. Ad Michael checked this out and he said, Car Wizard, we're going to have to remove the bumper. I said, what? He's like, yeah. The whole front bumper has to come off because it's all solid fiberglass shell under here. I suppose you could cut a hole into it. So we're not going to cut a hole in this really nice 95 Viper. Maybe in an 06 Murcielago we would cut a hole in it, but not one of these. Let's take a look over here. So a charcoal canister just exists to collect fuel vapors from the fuel tank. Whenever you're filling up with gas, all those vapors that would normally shoot out in your face, they actually get sent to the charcoal canister for storage. And the next time you start your engine, it opens the purge valve and it will actually clean all those vapors out and burn them in the engine. But this one's not working. And as you can see, we had to pull the whole bumper off. And there it is. It's the shape of a cylinder or a canister, I guess. That's why it's called the charcoal canister. But there's some issues going on with that. But as you can see, it's in a solid plastic frame. There's not much you can do through here. You could take the wheel well off, and I thought, well, just take the wheel liner off. You can't. Well, I thought, well, let's take the headlight off. You can't, because there's bolts from inside of here that go up into the headlight assembly. And you can't really get to those very easy either. And even if I could un unhook things in here, I can't get over to the charcoal canister to work on it. So I texted EuroAsian Bob and I said, hey, we're going to have to pull your whole bumper off. And he said, go ahead, we got to get it done. But this is another one of those scenarios. It's like, why didn't they just make this panel removable? I, I don't understand. It just really makes the job more expensive and more difficult than it needs to be. So, Car Wizard, on this car, what other things would you have to take the bumper off to repair or replace? There's the coolant reservoir, the horns. As you can see, there's the reservoir there. If it were leaking or something was wrong with it and you had to replace it, again, the bumper has to come off. If you had to replace the headlights, you wouldn't be able to get to all the bolts. Again, the bumper has to come off. It's kind of a pain. And there's so many bolts. Bolt, 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 bolt. It's like 50 bolts holding this thing on. It's crazy.
So here we are at the back of the Viper. I wanted to double check some EVAP lines and things that go to the fuel tank. And I remember there's an access panel. So we open it up. You can see the fuel tank. All those little plastic rivets had to be removed to get this panel right here off. Why couldn't that have just been a foam seal with some screws? It would be so much, so much easier. This, this took a lot of time to get this off. We finally got it figured out. There's some lines that have been pinched or whatever, and it just needs to be repaired. The charcoal canister is actually good. As you can see, it, nothing on this car is easy to get to or was designed to even really be gotten to without some amount of effort, a large amount of effort. So in either scenario, the, the actual part that needs to be replaced is not so expensive, especially on the Viper. Whether it could have been the charcoal canister or the pinch lines that we found, it would be 50, 60, 80 bucks and you're done, it's fixed. But the job is six, seven, eight hundred dollars for 50, 60, 70 dollar worth of repair. It, it, I wish it wasn't that way. I constantly have to give customers estimates and why, why is it so high? And once I go through all the rigmarole of everything that has to come off, they're like, okay, I understand it, I get it, but I wish it was cheaper. And I'm like, I do too. It would be less work for me, but. Whoa, Car Wizard, this thing is great. This is so vintage 90s. Look yeah. At this color and that can interior, this is great. It's a very rare color. Euro Asian Bob tells me that of all the Vipers, this is one of 17 that was painted this particular color. Wow, which is amazing because this was like one of the it colors in the 90s. Yeah, the teal color. There was a lot of cars, 92, 93. Yeah, that was, oh, yeah. That was the color in the early 90s. Oh, yeah, this is just beautiful. It is a very, very nice car. So if you're interested in it, hit up EuroAsian Bob. There's a link to his website in our description. You can check out all of his cars he has for sale there. Lots of really cool cars. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to fix these cars or to tear off the bumpers, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All the tools are listed for sale there. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. We've got so many more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.